In 4.3, we're going to continue talking about soil, focusing on the composition and properties of soil. And you want to know the differences and similarities between the different soil types and the properties of the soil types. So if we look at sand, or soil, sorry, um, under a microscope or a hand lens, and we actually took the measurements of the different types of particles, there are four main types of particles. Gravel, which are the really big pieces, then sand and silt and clay. Uh, really what we focus on is these smaller particles here as the composition of soil, like how much uh, how much of that soil is made out of the different types of particles that determines the properties of those um, of that soil. And we do that using um, a soil texture triangle. So the soil texture is the relative content of silt, sand, and clay. So basically what that means is if you have a lot of small particles, you're going to have a mostly clay soil. Um, same thing if you have a lot of sand, a lot of silt, um, but then you're going to have different mixtures in between. Uh, and then ideally we want to have something kind of in the middle because it brings out the best properties of each one, like clay loam, medium loam, just somewhere in here. To use this, um, you'll notice on the edges there is a um, percent scale. So if clay 0 to 100, silt starts up here 0 to 100, and then sand is on the bottom, it goes backwards, which is kind of counterintuitive, but sand also goes 0 to 100. So what I do is I start with the clay side. So I start here, and so uh, if it's at 30% clay, go up here, I make a dot or a line or something like that, and I draw the line, so it's 30% clay, and then go over to silt. So if you remember to do this, um, it helps the, to you know, know which directions to go in. You're going to start off this way, and you go down here, um, down to the left. Silt is 20%, so let's do the same thing, draw a line, and then sand is 50%. Go down here and draw the line, and it's where those lines intersect that uh, that's the texture of the soil that we have. Um, so, for example, this composition would yield sandy clay loam. Uh, you can do this by uh, the like we did in the lab, where you um, you let the soil sit for a couple days after letting after shaking it for, you know, like forever, what that did was it broke it down into its smallest pieces and so it allowed us to separate it into sand and silt and clay. And what you did is you measured the, the individual and total heights to see what was the composition of each, like what's the composition of the soil, how much of each type of particle is there, and then you use this triangle to then figure out which type of soil that is. Right. Next we're going to talk about water holding capacity. Water holding capacity is the total amount of water that soil can hold. Um, and it's different with different types of soil. So for example, clay can hold on to a lot of water because there's a lot of little tiny particles. Um, so there's a lot of um, surface area. And more surface area means there's more um, spaces for that water to get into. Um, so water holding capacity is then going to uh, lead into water retention. So if the water can, or if the soil can hold a lot of water, but then it also doesn't let go of the water, that might not be so great for soil. But if it can hold on to a lot of water and just drains right on through, then it's, that's not a good soil either because, you know, your plants need water. Like I said, the water holding capacity is determined by texture. Sand holds the least, clay holds the most. We can change the texture in order to improve the water holding capacity. Um, of course, it takes forever to change the soil naturally, so what we can do is add organic matter. Um, so we can plant crops around, or like, what we call it cover crops. So it's like crops that are less valuable or easier to grow, or even just like shrubs or something. Um, just more organic matter around the soil. Less tillage. What tillage is is when they go and overturn the soil. Um, to loosen it up and aerate it and, um, you know, prepare the soil for replanting. 
problem with tillage is it uh, it takes away a lot of organic stuff. It takes away a lot of you know smaller plants, but grass, other vegetation that can then lead to more organic matter. So doing that less is is a good thing. Um, we can also add things to it like clay, manure, and compost. All these things will add organic matter and allow that soil to hold on to more water. Um, especially if it's a very, very sandy soil. <laughs> you want to know that the particle size and composition of each soil horizon can affect the porosity, permeability, and fertility of the soil. So we've already kind of talked about um, water holding capacity. It's very similar to that. So porosity is the amount of airspace in the soil. Um, you can see that uh, porosity, or the porosity is highest in sand, so there's really big air spaces, whereas the spaces in between the particles of clay are very small. So clay is the least porous, and that's going to determine the permeability. So with the bigger spaces, it's kind of it's much easier for water to snake on through, but the smaller spaces is much harder. So that means sand, if it's the most porous, it's the most permeable. And then clay is the least porous, least permeable. The more permeable it is, the less water it will retain because, again, it just drains running through. Um, so that soil will also drain more, which can be a good thing, can be a bad thing. Again, it kind of wants something sort of in the middle. Less permeable soil will mean that more water can be retained, but less will drain. Now this is why landfills will typically be lined with clay because as water um, as water gets rained on in landfills, it kind of seeks on through and creates what we call leachate. We'll talk more about this later in the year. Uh, but what leachate basically is is this toxic liquid, and we don't want that getting into our local water supply. So by lining the landfills with clay, if clay doesn't allow water to flow through it very easily, then it also means it's not going to allow leachate to um, to flow through it very easily. But then also it makes an issue for farms. If they have a lot of clay, they're more prone to waterlogging, um, which can then kill the roots and kill the plants. And then I just want to briefly talk about soil horizons across the biomes. So first up is the tropical rainforest soil. It's very humid, very tropical. That means you have a lot of rain. Um, it's kind of the name rainforest. And it's thought the lot by students that rainforests should have great soil because they have lots and lots of plants, but that's actually not true. Uh, because they get a lot of rain, rain is slightly acidic, which means it's less than seven, so there's constant getting it's a little bit of acidic rain. But then, because there's just so much rain, it all kind of adds up, so that soil actually ends up becoming very acidic. Additionally, the nutrients um, there's not a lot of nutrients in the soil because there's just it's constantly being taken up by growing plants. Um, any that it's like as soon as they're there, they're gone. Deciduous forest, um, it's humid, more mild. You can see you've got this these nice, pretty layers. Um, you got this leaf litter. You got humus. And it's a nice, pretty color. And then across these other ones are deserts. They get. Um, they don't get a lot of rain, so they, you don't see a lot of humus being formed. Grasslands, there's constant vegetation, so there's constant nutrients being added to the um, to the soil. So we see a nice, uh, nice A horizon. Same thing with coniferous forest soil. Much more, much more plants, much more stuff to add to the the humus. Um, so again, we see like these nice layers being formed. So. The last thing I want to do is talk about the different properties of soil. Uh, it's important to know these properties of soil, especially if you are a farmer or a gardener, because those can affect the decisions that you make about how to water the plants and how to provide nutrients to your plants to grow better. Chemical properties looks at the nutrients, the acidity, and salt levels. So um, nutrients, main ones we look at are nitrogen because that uh, affects the foliage of the plant. Phosphorus affects the roots and then potassium affects the growth. So you want a good balance of these in order to have the best plants. pH is important because certain crops or plants will not grow a certain pHs. Um, so it's important to be able to 
to test your soil to know what kind of soil you have to modify it to get to the pH that your soil need or your plants need. And then salt can do damage to the, the roots of the plant. Um, we'll talk more about this when we get to soil. <sighs> what is it? In agriculture, issues from soil. We'll talk about salinization. We'll talk about um, ways to fix that. Biological properties is basically anything living in the soil and how that affects it. Uh, the things that add both biolog or organic matter to the soil also might aerate it because they crawl through it, um, move things around, and so on. And the physical properties are things like the texture, so the amount of sand, silt, clay, the permeability, the porosity, the water holding capacity, um, things like that. Now to summarize, you want to describe the similarities and differences between properties of different soil types.